Welcome to Hub City Game Day. I'm your interim host, Gabe Calhoun. And speaking of interims, got my boy Andy here today. Andy, tell me why the word interim is so important today. The word interim is so important because yesterday evening, Southern Miss head football coach Will Hall was fired. And we've been talking about it, you know, like what the keys are to win, what the keys aren't to win. Would this be a key to win, removing Will Hall? Do we think? It's it's hard to tell, man. I mean, so many things can happen now. Uh, interim head coach was named uh, Reed Stringer. He is the former assistant head coach for Southern Miss and has served at other schools. And I don't know much about him, to say the least, but if he can win, certainly a key to win. Look, what Coach Stringer needs to do is to just light a fire under the team. Now, some of the guys are hit or miss on Will Hall. You can see it on the field, but with the interim head coach, their job is to just light the fire. We've seen Cadillac Williams do it with Auburn. He should have got the head coaching job, in my opinion, but we're not talking about Auburn. We're talking about Southern Miss. Right. Now, we have a list of names. I feel like we should go down and talk about who could be a potential match. All right. Now, first off on the list is Reed Stringer himself. If Stringer can pull together and get more, I, I would have. At least a three-win season, I feel like. I would say three wins. You know, he could be a definite um, candidate for head coach of the Golden Eagles in 2025. Um, somebody else, and this is a real popular one among the fan base, is Brennan Marion, the OC at UNLV. He's um he runs a very he runs a pro spread offense and um what he calls the go go offense, which ought to be pretty cool. It's a little bit of no huddle, a little bit of flash. Right. Look, I like Brennan Marion. You see what he's doing at UNLV mm -hmm. right now. I want him. Cocky young guy that would be good for Southern. That's Mets. what we need. We need somebody who's gonna put butts in seats. It's like, oh, we're gonna go out here like. Put it this way, he needs to be our prime effect, essentially. That's what we need. Yeah, definitely. The stands but, aren't full, like none of that. We need somebody who's going to at least put butts in seats. Right. A young guy would be great, but there's a few older heads, too, that we could use, I think, would, that would lighten the program. Number one, Larry Fedora. It's worked in the past. The only thing is, is if we hire him, the fan base needs to be willing to give him a little time. You know, we go if we finish 1-11 this year and we hire Fedora, you can't expect to go 12-0 and next year. You know, but he's gonna bring some guys with him. His name carries a lot of weight. He will. He will. I, I'll give him that. Another older head, and uh, this is a this is a thing that has worked in the past for Southern Miss, and it's going and hiring the offensive coordinator from Oklahoma State. Well, we it worked for us with Jeff Bauer, <laughs> Larry Fedora, and Todd Munkin. Um, Casey Dunn is the OC at um, Oklahoma State. That'd be another big hire. I think he could and do. That would bring some power four guys in too. They're going to go with their coach. Oh, definitely. Oh yeah. And um, just a couple others. Um, Brian Harson, former coach at Boise State and Auburn. After what happened at Auburn, I can guarantee you that Harson's going to be looking for another thing to do. Try to get his name good again, and Southern Miss is the perfect place for him to do that. And lastly on my list, just another name of somebody who's doing really good at a really good school, Mike Shanahan, the OC at Indiana. They're undefeated for the first time in almost 90 years. I mean. They're not a basketball school this year, man. Right, it shows something's happening. But let's talk about two more coaches that were in, in the SBC, now they're in the SEC. Mm -hmm. Billy Napier and Kane Womack. Man, um, What do we feel about that? Billy Napier is hard to tell. You know, I, I thought at the beginning of the year he was getting fired and he would be gone at the end of the, or even halfway by this time. But um, if he keeps winning and playing games like he did yesterday, Saturday, against Kentucky, he, he'll, he'll have a job at Florida at the end of the year. Um, Kane Womack, he's, he's one I'd really like to see. I, I think he wanted to come to Southern Miss and coach whenever we hired Will Hall, but um, if, if, this, if this Alabama defense stuff doesn't work out for him, yeah. he's gone from Alabama and he'll be a great hire for Southern Miss. He's going to bring the swag. He's going to bring the stuff that South Alabama had in the past years. He's going to bring it here. Now, you know, it's an hour, 40 minutes out of the road. He could stay in his old house in Mobile and just come commute to work every day. <laughs> right. But look, one more thing, Andy, I want to touch on. When hiring Will Hall, we had the option to get Coach Prime. Now, look, they say Coach Prime was, quote, unquote, inexperienced because he only coached high school ball. It does not matter to me. He was going to bring the Prime effect. We, we could be top Sun Belt team right now with people he recruited. Mm -hmm. Jackson State still has theirs. Colorado has theirs. We, he'd bring in the guys. Because I feel like in the Sun Belt, it's more about who you bring and not how you coach them. Well, perfect example of how high school success doesn't always transfer up, Trent Dilfer at UAB. Yeah. UAB has experienced one of their worst years right now. True. Um, 
And what was Trent Dilfer's previous job? He was a high school coach. High school coach. I don't believe there's a it's a different level of ball at Jackson State, Southern Miss, and Colorado. If we'd have hired Prime whenever we thought about it, we could have done just as bad with Will Hall. Jackson State jumped on it and they did good, but it's a different level of football at that level. True. Same true. at Colorado right now. It's a it's a whole nother level from Southern Miss to Colorado, a, a storied team like Colorado. But then you go from Jackson State to Colorado. You know, we saw them go four and eight last year. I think they've got five wins so far this season. And if they go six and six this year, that's good. But he still needs better production for the talent he's got. I feel like bringing in talent is what we need from a coach. Because, I mean, we have three-star guys. We have four-star guys. But, like, we need those We need those bigger names who are, like, getting million-dollar NILs to come, come to Little Hattiesburg and do something for us, you know? That's so right. we need a coach who's going to do that. That's right. Um, and if, we, if we're going to go that way, you know, off of this list here, you could probably do that with about three other coaches on this list, Brian Harson, Larry Fedora, and Brennan Marion. Yeah. All their names carry something in the college oh, football yeah. world. So look, man, this is what we're going to do. Comment down below who you think our head coach should be, whether it be me or Andy. It could be Micah. You know, he's, he's out looking for a coaching job as we speak. <laughs> you know, uh, you know my, my, my case, I want it to be Brendan Mary. Who, you, who do you want it to be? I, w I wouldn't mind Brendan Marion. I think he's a good idea. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of between a young guy and an old guy. Um, I would say Mike Shanahan, the OC at Indiana, would be a great hire for Southern Miss. But with, with them being undefeated, I don't know, man. Well, look, we'll have an update for you guys soon. Until then, comment on YouTube, comment on Instagram, watch it on YouTube. You know, even. DM us if you have an idea for the episode or you want to be part of the show. Just let us know, man. Until then, it's been Hub City Game Day. I'm Gabe. I'm Andy. We'll see you later.